will now call the Common Council meeting of December 1st, 2020 to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Kurkowski. Here. Lorek. Here. Oh, you're muted, Craig. Muted. Here. Kuzniak. Here. Tillman. Here. Gail. Here. Kuzikowski. Here. Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, Rich, you want to start us? I certainly will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before we do the approval of minutes, Catherine, uh, would you please uh, read the notice of video conferencing into the record? Certainly. The City of Oak Creek is authorized to hold this public meeting remotely during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This meeting being conducted via Zoom video, video conference with telephone conferencing capabilities was duly noticed per the City of Oak Creek Municipal Code and statutory notice requirements more than 24 hours in advance of the meeting. Members of the public have been advised of the options for participation via direct mailing to property owners. This meeting may also be viewed at the City's YouTube page the link for which was contained in all aforementioned notice methods. The meeting recording will also be accessible on the city's YouTube page within 48 hours. When unmuted, all participants must state their name and address for the record, then proceed with comments or questions. Questions and comments may also be entered into the Q&A function within the Zoom webinar control panel. Staff and or the moderator will monitor this function during the meeting and provide the information requested. There is one or more public hearings scheduled as part of this meeting. After the mayor announces the public hearing, staff will read the public hearing notice into the record. State that the hearing is open and subject to the meeting procedure above and provide a brief overview of the proposal. The chair will then proceed with the hearing by making calls for public comment. Following the third call for public comment, the chair will close the public hearing and proceed to consideration of the remaining agenda items. Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. Um, that'll get us to the approval of minutes of November 17th, 2020. If everybody please take a look. When you're satisfied, there's no errors, omissions, or comments, questions. We'll ask for a motion. Kowski, make a motion to approve the minutes of November 17, 2020. Next second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. I think we're having some problems with Alderman Lorick's sound, if, if we could. Greg, I think you're unmuted, but just double check, please. Can you hear me? Faint okay. sound coming. Yeah, it's a faint sound. As long as cat, as long as the record's picking it up. I okay. could hear. Okay. Um, item four. It's a public hearing for condition consideration of a conditional use permit for an automotive, motorcycle, recreation vehicle, and marine sales <laughs> in the property at ninety five forty three South Chicago Road. Catherine, if you'd read that into the record, please. Certainly. Notice of public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is to consider a request submitted by Abdel Ali, Crystal Lake Toyota, Scan, doing business as Lakeview Autos for a conditional use permit to allow an automotive, motorcycle, recreation vehicle, and marine sales facility on the property at 9543 South Chicago Road. Abdel Ali, Crystal Lake Toyota, Scan, doing business as Lakeview Autos. Property owner is Steve and Deborah Pitrios, Property location is 9543 South Chicago Road. There follows the legal description and the date of notice is October 28th, 2020. Thank you, Catherine. And with us is Doug Seymour. He'll kind of bring us up to speed. You with us, Doug? I am, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good evening, my name is Doug Seymour. I am the Director of Community Development for the City of Oak Creek. And this is a public hearing and a request for a conditional use permit to allow for automotive, motorcycle, and recreational vehicle sales within a portion of the existing commercial building at 953 South Chicago Road. So for our code, uh, automotive, motorcycle, recreational, that, 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 sales and service uses are conditional uses in the B4 Highway Business Zoning District, which is what this property is owned. 
I mean, it's important to note that service is not part of this request. And Lakeview Motors, who currently occupies space in this multi-tenant commercial building, has recently expanded the leased area to accommodate the request for a display and sale of jet skis, canoes, motorcycles, and compact collectible vehicles. So all vehicles and items for sale will be displayed interior to the lease space. There would be no outdoor display or storage areas that are proposed. Uh, there would be no additional lighting, landscaping, or other site or building modification proposed as part of the request. Uh, so the plan commission, they reviewed at the, at the meetings of October 13th and October 27th, and they did, did recommend approval of this conditional use permit, as well as the conditions and restrictions uh, that are before you to regulate that conditional use. So with that, brief introduction in mind this is a public hearing i would ask that if there's any questions or comments regarding the proposed conditional use for 95432 Chicago road to please indicate to the moderator in the zoom panel uh, by raising their hand or to our president in the council chamber please uh, once recognized by the the uh, mayor to please proceed to the podium and address your questions or comments to the common council this public hearing is now Thank you, Doug. And this will be our first hearing. Uh, we have nobody in the room. Do we have anybody on video wishing to participate? Thank you. This will be the second call. Anybody on video now? Any raise hand functions? Nothing? Third and final call. Seeing nothing on video, we will now close the public hearing and go on to item five, which is consideration of the ordinance approving that conditional use permit. Open it up to the council for questions, comments. Got one, Mayor. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Uh, Alderman Tolman, Doug, uh, do, we, do we know how much of that building is actually gonna be, that space is gonna be taken up? You know, Alderman Tolman, I, I don't have that information. I mean, we could we could find that out uh, from the applicant, and I, I was hoping that there'd be someone on the attending the public hearing on their behalf. Uh, apparently, that is not the case, but um, no, I do not have that information. All right, thank you. It was just kind of a curiosity question, so thank you. Any other questions, comments? No. Uh, Planning-wise, again, they kind of vetted it out. They're repurposing the building, as Alderman Tolman said. They're taking over a portion of it. And I believe it was about half, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, again, there was gonna be no outside storage. Uh, they're hoping to start and grow and eventually, who knows, uh, with the development of the lake, I think it's a good location. So uh, definitely a unique, unique purpose for it and something different. So if there's no further questions, um, motion on five, please. Alderman Tolman will make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2993, approving a conditional use permit for automotive motorcycle recreation vehicle and marine sales on the property at 9543 South Chicago Road. Is it second? Roll call. Alderman Dukniak? Aye. Tolman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorek? Aye. Okay. Uh, Item six is informational. Uh, it's a brief COVID-19 update. And with us is our health officer, Darcy Dubois. Welcome, Darcy. Thanks, good evening. I'm Darcy Dubois, health officer with the Oak Creek Health Department. Uh, I don't have a lot of new information to share tonight. Uh, the situation is fairly similar to what we were seeing about a month ago when I was uh, provided the last update. As of today, we've seen over 2,700 individuals here in Oak Creek that have tested positive. Uh, we have seen over the past uh, couple of weeks, a slight decrease in the number of new individuals testing positive. I'm just gonna share my screen here. Okay, so this first graph that you can see is the number of uh, new individuals testing positive each week. You can see that the past couple of weeks we've seen a decrease. It's hard to say if that's a trend or if it's possible that fewer people were getting tested uh, given the holidays and deer hunting and things like that that we know people have been busy with. So um, as always, we're closely monitoring the data to see if anything changes. Um, I wouldn't be a surprise to see an, an increase in the new positive cases following the Thanksgiving holiday, but 
um, again, we will be keeping a close eye on that. Uh, we've seen over 12,000 individuals here in Oak Creek have a negative COVID test. Uh, we do continue to see a, a large number of individuals being tested each week. So this shows the total number of individuals tested uh, each week. The last three weeks have been our highest um, since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, the burden right here, which again is the number of uh, new individuals testing positive over the past 14 days, calculated as a rate per 100,000 people. Here in Oak Creek is currently 1,934 per 100,000. And our current percent positivity is 17.5%. You can see that we did see a decrease in the percent of positive tests uh, with last week's data as well. Also, as of today, uh, 35 Oak Creek residents um, have died as a result of COVID. Um, so the number of COVID hospitalizations in our area remains high as it does across the state. Hospital systems continue to report concerns with staffing shortages um, and have been trying to get creative to continue to be able to care for all of the patients that are coming in. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the alternate care facility at State, State Fair Park did open. Uh, they remain open and have served over 125 patients since they opened last month. Los local hospitals have been transferring patients to that facility to preserve their capacity to care for more critically ill patients. Um, in some cases, they are transferring patients straight from the emergency room to that facility. We did also hear that Children's Hospital has opened their doors to care for adult patients um, to provide care for the overflow from area hospitals. So they are serving as a secondary alternate care facility here in the Milwaukee area. Um, the, we here in the health department continue to operate with our crisis standards of contact tracing, um, meaning that we are continue to ask individuals who test positive to notify their own contacts and that we are no longer monitoring individuals who test positive during their isolation period. We just don't have the staffing capacity to do that like we were doing earlier in the pandemic. Now the South Shore testing site in South Milwaukee continues to be busy. Um, it was initially scheduled to close next week as of December 9th, but we have received word from the state um, that they will likely be able to continue to make National Guard staff available to continue testing past that date. So as of now, it's likely that we'll be able to open at least, or we will be able to remain open at least through the end of December. Um, after that, we would need additional funding from the state or the county in order to be able to remain open as we wouldn't be able to fund that as local health departments once our CARES funding expires at the end of December. Um, so I will continue to provide updates about the status of that testing site, but as of now, it's likely it will be open through the end of December. We will also have a short-term mobile testing unit here in Oak Creek, one day a week, likely beginning uh, in two weeks. Um, the county has used some of their excess CARES funding to purchase or to contract with Curative, who's providing four of these mobile testing units that will uh, provide services throughout the county. So we're still working out the details and I will share those once they have been finalized. Are there any questions that I can answer? Steve, Percy Alderman Krakowski, uh, back to that burden rate that is used uh, primarily uh, for a lot of purposes, primarily the school district. Um, it's based on uh, 100,000 people, correct? Uh, um, right, we calculate it as a rate per 100,000 okay. people. What Generally, what do you think that burden rate would look like if you just used the population of Oak Creek? 36,000 thereabouts. What, I mean, just for a snapshot, what would it look like? Because right. we, got, we don't have 100,000 people. Right, so we take the number of, of new positives here in Oak Creek, which is the true number of people who have tested positive over the past few weeks, and we calculate that as a rate so that we can compare it and understand how our number of positives compares to other surrounding communities. So we would divide that rate by, you know, about three a little less than three to get the, the actual number of new positive cases in that two week period. So if we divided by three, we'd have 645. Burden rate would be 645? If you divided by three. Yeah. Okay. All right. That might be some information to share just for GWIS because 
it might uh, provide a little glimmer of hope to those who keep seeing that number going up, but with regards to Oak Creek, it wouldn't be so bad. I mean, it wouldn't present the situation as being so bad. If you, sure. if you think you have an opportunity to, to, to separate that, or at least estimate, that might yeah, be nice. And we, we do share the number of new positive cases with each of our COVID updates. So that information is being shared. Yeah, I know, but people- The number of positives. Yeah, but people are really focused on that burden rate. So if you broke it down to an Oak Creek level, that may not look so bad, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Rich, anything? Yes, uh, Darcy Alderman, Duke Neak, 3rd District. Uh, you mentioned that the funding for this is uh, expected to end at the end of December. Whose responsibility then would it be to request additional funding? I mean, is it at the state level, at the county level, or would the three municipalities make a, a special request for funding? I mean, certainly, I don't think the, the demand for testing is going to go away at the end of, of December, and that this is a critical tool that needs to be continued. So just right. who, uh, how would we go ahead and, and, and pursue funding to continue operations? Uh, yeah, it's a good question, and I think the answer is is all of the above. Um, certainly, there has been some advocacy work, and the mayor uh, is aware of this and maybe can speak more to it, but um, the ICC has put forth a letter to the state to request ongoing funding for testing and other COVID-related response activities. We uh, local health departments make that request on a daily basis right now on our, oh, okay. on our daily calls with the state health department. Um, and I know that the state health of the county and the and the state are also advocating the federal government to continue to provide funding because much of the funding has been from that federal CARES funding. So if you have additional advocacy um, suggestions or um, ideas, we certainly are open to them. But I, we have really been putting a lot of pressure on to um, continue with the funding and to have a decision about that sooner rather than later, um, because obviously it takes a lot of coordination to operate a testing site as well. Keep up the heat, Darcy. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Darcy is correct. The ICC sent a petition letter out, and then the South Shore mayors, uh, South Milwaukee, Franklin, Oak Creek, um, Cudahy, we all petitioned for, and St. Francis, all petitioned to get the extension at the South Shore just recently. Mike? I'm good. Greg? Anything? Um, yeah, I have a quick question. Um, you mentioned that the the positivity rate and the number of positives dipped this past week. Um, you don't know if it's a trend or not yet. If it were a trend, how quickly does that reflect in the burden rate? Is that an immediate reflection or does that actually have to go the, I know it's called the 14 day burden rate. Mm -hmm. Does it go 14 days before that's actually reflected in there? Um, no, I would expect that we'll probably see a decrease in the burden rate this week. So that, that rate is calculated every week. So since we've seen a decrease for about a week now, that means that you know the, the previous 14 day period would have had more positives than the immediate four, previous 14 day period, if that makes sense, would be calculated this week. So, so it should be reflected fairly quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, Ken, nothing? Yeah, Chris? Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. No, I, I think that's it, Darcy. Um, Andrew, anything? No, I, I have nothing again. Uh, I guess it's actually nice to see those graphs dipping down. So uh, again, hopefully we'll be out of this sooner than later and uh, we can get the kids back where they belong in school and get back to what, what we were accustomed to. I think we're a little ways out, but um, again, it's nice to see the numbers sloping down. So thank you. Okay, that is it. Thank you, Darcy. Appreciate it. Stay safe. Uh, item seven, it's consideration of an ordinance fixing the salary, the, the range, the salary ranges, salary wages and allowances for full-time non-union general supervisory management personnel and other city office positions for the year 2021. Andrew? I'll step in like you, Judy, the night off. better there we go gave judy the night off and said i could handle this for her so really the next to several items on the agenda are typical annual uh, wage and salary uh, fixing of the wages and salaries uh, nothing uh, truly unique in, in in any of this i would just note that the personnel committee did meet is that the week before last already yeah yes yeah, so two weeks ago 
uh, and recommended approval. Um, the for the majority, the vast majority, with rare exception, uh, is representative of the uh, 1.75 across the board increase. Uh, this immediate ordinance here for the full time non union general and supervisory and management personnel, just a note of caution and really a reminder. Uh, we are on the cusp of the transition with our clerk and treasurer for uh, moving from elected to appointed after they carry out the, the final several months here of their term. Uh, those uh, two positions go to appointed. Right now, uh, when we established their uh, salary in a, in a separate ordinance as elected officials, that carries through to May. So that uh, change or the, those positions are not reflected in this ordinance. Of course, they will be subsequent uh, to, you know, in subsequent years. We know what that compensation is as it was agreed to when we went through that uh, appointment transition. Uh, so I'll be working with Melissa to, to understand if we need to bring something back uh, or if we can handle this administratively for this year, but either way, we'll do that closer to, to May. Um, okay. in but then in end of that term. 22, as we do this exercise again, they'll be included <clears throat> in that. Though. They'll be in there. Uh, Steve? I, I'm sure I'll get it organized here, but I've got a couple of uh, salary things here, and I don't believe the item numbers are matched up with uh, the agenda. So They're a little bit off. Look yeah, at item so five. five. It's marked five currently. It's marked five on the, the green piece of paper? Yes. Okay, great. It's Thank full, you. It's the full-time ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, other questions, comments? Give you guys some time to digest it a little bit. Yeah. I know the personnel's probably seen it already. Oh, Mike, sorry. Alderman Toman, uh, Andrew, are the, you know, on your same page report, uh, you recommended two, uh, two base uh, rate wage uh, increases. Are these included in that chart that are here? These are reflected in the ordinance as they were at the personnel committee as well. They are, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Greg, how, how are you looking there? I'm good so far. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Anything from Rich? I'm on personnel, so we've gone through okay. this. Um, seeing no further questions, comments, uh, motion, please. I'm going to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2989, fixing the salary ranges, salary ranges, salary wages, and allowances for full-time non-union general supervisory and management personnel and other city offices and positions for the year 2021. Mr. Kelsky, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. And item eight is consideration of an ordinance fixing the salary ranges, wages, and allowances for part-time personnel and other city office positions for the year 2021. Andrew? Same deal. Um, I just pause for questions if you have any, but it's the same same process, same logic, same base, base increase. Give you guys a little bit to flip through it and digest it all. Comments, questions? Hey, okay, seeing none, uh, motion please on eight. I'm gonna make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2990, fixing the salary ranges, salary, wages and allowances for part-time personnel and other city offices and positions for the year 2021. Let's go second. Roll call. Alderman Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. And item nine is consideration of ordinance fixing the salary ranges allowances for police, lieutenants, and sergeants for the year 2021. So really the same thing on this mayor and council, but I do have to point out a, an error and I have a revised ordinance here should you require it, but it's really only one figure uh, and that is for the police sergeant in your packet. Uh, it cites a 
total compensation number of 94,462. That was actually a clerical error. Uh, the number is actually 96,092. So we'll make sure we get the right ordinance signed, but that was something Judy caught here in the, uh, between personnel and, and, uh, and council. So just wanted to make note of that. And also on this topic, uh, you know, we, we've been having these discussions. We had these discussions at budget time, and, and I know uh, Chief Anderson is, is on the horn here. If he if he wanted to time in, if it pleases you, Mayor, um, you know, we really have to put some solutions in place to the compression issues and the command staff in both police and fire. We talked a lot about this at the last personnel meeting at the budget work, uh, at least the the personnel meeting for the budget. Um, you know, so I think at every opportunity, you know, Steve would appreciate it if if I or he brought this up and. Let you know we need to we need to put something impactful in place because the uh, you know the 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 floor uh, you know of the you know subordinate staff to the command staff is really creeping up and and really that compression is a real issue in both police and fire so wanted to just draw your attention to that we should really effort to to have something in place for the next budget to to correct for that. I agree, um, uh, Chief. So would wanted, you like to add anything? Um, I I explained. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just Chief Anderson. Let me turn my camera on. So, um, and I've been, this was part of a, camera's not working, sorry. This was part of a budget uh, request for this year to try and, and uh, there I am, <coughs> fix, fix an issue. Um, and it's for basically for that top union position to the frontline supervisors. There's a lot of, there's significant compression there. When you fix that, obviously it moves everything up. Um, I understand, I, I explained it, I believe at the budget workshop again, so I appreciate the opportunity to at least keep it in front of everybody um, uh, moving forward. Um, and I don't, unless there's questions, I don't know that it needs any further explanation at this point, other than um, I'm hoping we can keep working towards this. I'll just add to the uh, the conversation that was had at personnel committee because it is uh, material uh, to, to the council at this point. When right now we are providing the across the board increase for these folks um, without a union, without a wage settlement for the for the police union. So what I, I believe the uh, personnel committee resolved to do it wasn't any action or motion or anything, but you know we can't let that compression issue get worse. So once we know what that wage settlement is for the union employees out there. What we would do is go back through the personnel, uh, and if it's if it's something higher than the 1.75 that the you know non-represented folks are getting here in, in this instance, the command staff, uh, we will have to revisit that for um, you know an adjustment to make sure we're not exacerbating the problem in the meantime. This has been an ongoing problem for this isn't anything new. So, any other comments, questions? If none, uh, motion. I'm going to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2991, fixing the salary ranges and allowances for police lieutenants and sergeants for the year 2021 with the uh, correction on the uh, sergeant's uh, total compensation number. Andrew's got that 96, uh, whatever. Or 92. Yeah. I'll feel second. Roll call. Alderman Grzykowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lork? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gale? Aye. And item 10 is consideration of an ordinance uh, confirming adoption of the settlement agreement between the City of Oak Creek and the Labor Associations of Wisconsin, known as law, fixing the salary for members of the association for 2021. Andrew. This one's a little unique. It's um, out of character from the previous three, but uh, this is not abnormal for you. It's an annual uh, deal for us to review this uh, settlement agreement with the labor association we have here we refer to as the law group um, post act 10 uh, non-public safety associations or unions uh, really could only bargain to base wages uh, and the base wage is actually determined by the wisconsin employee relations commission and for that determination for contracts starting one one or agreements starting one one of 21 the maximum CPI is 1.56%. As we did in the previous year, we look to, uh, albeit uh, not a base wage amplification, 
Uh, so the 1.56 will go to the base, but we also want to try to make up to these uh, individuals in this group to at least get to the equivalency of the 1.75% that the rest of the non-represented employees are getting across the board. So that uh, non-base building bonus or whatever you would want to call it, one-time stipend, uh, makes up the other 0.19%, I believe, in the total fiscal impact of, of right around $5,000 all in. So uh, the, the group you know, it's good. It's pretty easy to meet with that group, right? We kind of say what it is, what's on our mind, and then that's that. That's that. And we come to the council and the personnel committee. Um, very appreciative of of again, uh, you know, the council considering making, uh, although they have a limitation on the CPI uh, for wages, uh, making them you know at least somewhat consistent, albeit not in a in a base building uh, manner. So they were very appreciative. It was a good good conversation with that group. Yeah. Questions, comments? Just Rich? One, one question, Alderman Dukniak, 3rd District. Andrew, uh, at the meeting with the law group, uh, there was a statement made that they believed that they didn't get the uh, that small bump uh, that made the, the salary increase equivalent to all others. Did we get that cleared up? Uh, we did, and okay. they were actually correct. And I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how that happened. Um, wow. But, I mean, we were still in the same... You know, we were still in the same fiscal year. I'm, I'm shocked it didn't get brought up, you know, before okay. the end of the year. But uh, we are making that adjustment to for right. them, making sure we get that. I feel pretty away. foolish now because I said there's no way that could have happened. I didn't think we would have missed that either. Yeah. But, yeah, okay. we, we did, and, and we're getting it corrected. Great. Thank you. Anything else, guys? None. Nothing. Uh, Ted, anything to add or you okay? Um, no, I don't have anything to add to it. I okay. think well, they appreciate the fact that uh, that uh, we bumped them up so that uh, they could receive the same increases as, as everyone else. Um, you know, whether or not it could be base building or not, you know, I mean, but I, I still think it's appreciated. Great. Appreciate those guys work, particularly when it snows and I got to get out and go to work and they got the streets plowed for me. So, um, Motion on eight, if uh, I'm sorry, ten. 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 If uh, I'm going to make a motion to adopt ordinance number twenty nine ninety two, confirming adoption of the settlement agreement between the city of Oak Creek and law, and fixing the salary for members of the association for the year twenty twenty one. Zikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. And 11 is consideration of acknowledging and filing the 2021 calendar year salary grade plans and benefits for our library personnel. Um, I don't see Jill here. Andrea, Jill, Jill is on. Um, so Jill, if you wanted to oh, chime Jill's in on this one. I don't see her. There you go. Hey, there everyone. Um, so as the, just like the other, um, items ahead of this. This is just setting the wages for the library staff for 2021. The library board approved it in November. And um, so now we're just going to you for the final. Okay. Any questions for Jill? Uh, just a comment, Alderman Dukniak, third district. Um, I did do the quick math and uh, simply on the library director's position. And I'm assuming it holds true for the remaining uh, positions that the increases uh, were consistent with all the other departments, and it was 1.75 percent. That wasn't listed anywhere on the uh, on the report. Yes, but it's, it is it one. Was, it, was it is 1.75. Everyone else. Thank you for the information. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth pointing out as well. You know, Jill does this as a courtesy to the council, and I think it's it's really appreciated. I mean, the library board is is really set. You you have the purse strings of the budget. Uh, the library, library board's empowered to set and fix the compensation, but you know I think this is a nice way to round out the communication piece on this and make sure we're all on the same page. So I, I um, agree I with you. you on that, and, Jill. And I don't think the general public realizes that, and I think that's a really good point. And again, it just shows how well people work together around here. So thank you. So if no other questions, motion. I'm going to make a motion to adopt resolution number one two two zero two, acknowledging and filing. The 2021 calendar year salary grade plans and benefits for library personnel. Let's go second. Full call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. 
Jukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. And item 12, uh, consideration of a resolution establishing the fees, permits, and charges charged by the city of Oak Creek to be effective 1-1 one, one of 21. Uh, Andrew? So I'm probably not of much help here, but I think what we should do given this impacts so many departments and people on the call, if we could if we could just address any council questions and, and then we can direct them to the appropriate department director or division manager, that might be the best way to go versus you know, having a carousel of folks explain what's in there. We can certainly do that if it pleases you, Mayor, but. Well, I, I think you're right. I mean, you know, the staff report covers a lot of the engineering stuff, uh, community development, fire, engineering, health, and these just are fees that are adjusted semi-annually as needed to keep up with surrounding areas. Um, if, if I've said something that, that doesn't hold true, please feel free to step in and correct me, but uh, they're minor at best. I don't know if it's necessarily comparability with other communities, more so it is our cost for doing business and, and you know things, so, uh, things increasing, supplies or whatever. And traditionally, the city of Oak Creek is kind of lagged behind in our fees uh, somewhat, and sometimes we just had to bring them up just cause. But, but no, I think that's a good point as well. Uh, we do try to at least cover staff costs to do it. And those are the areas that are very, very been very heavily impacted. So Mayor, questions, if, comments? Yes, go ahead, Doug. If, if I might, because there's in the, as it relates to the Department of Community Development, there are two things that I'd like to at least bring to your, your attention. And what, the first is what we call an expedited review fee. And there are times probably more often than we'd like where where people, you know, we've got our, our, our four week uh, period before you can wish apply to the plan commission. And in, in probably way too many cases, there are folks that, uh, is there any way you can get me in sooner? I mean, this is very time sensitive, what have you, for a number of reasons, you know, a lot of valid reasons. And you know, we try to be accommodating for that, but that does have impacts upon staff resources, as well as it impacts others, uh, projects that are in the queue. So in order to at least allow for that possibility, but not make it a normal occurrence, we're proposing an expedited review fee equal to one half of the the fee. For instance, if it's a you know an eight hundred dollar rezoning fee, uh, to expedite the review would be an additional four hundred dollars. Things of that nature. The other is a landscape reinspection re fee. Uh, our landscaping initial landscaping inspections for our plan commission landscape plans are included as part of the site plan review fee. But again, as we often find, it takes three, four different inspections to go out there and get this thing all finaled out because you know they'll do it incrementally or they'll just, in some cases, people just don't take it seriously. But in other cases, it's just, it's, they do it as, you know, they do the work for the day. They want us to come out there and inspect it. That's not a great way to operate. So we're going to try and through a landscape reinspection fee in those instances, at least recoup some of those costs. Great, thank you, Doug. That's good information. Any other questions, comments? Uh, I guess question, comment, um, and I'll present this to my colleagues on the council as, as any, and, and all the other department heads as well. I, I, do you receive regularly any, any feedback from constituents about the fee schedule? Uh, I, I know in my four years, mm -hmm. uh, I think Doug brings up a good point. I don't think I've ever had a had a complaint about fees. Uh, you know about the expedited review fee. Um, usually, and quite frankly, in my experience, it's been the applicant drags their feet, doesn't follow the process, and then is on a tight timeline and can't get through our process timely, um, and then they get upset. So I, I, I think I think that's a very very wise decision that they made in community development to do that. Any others? Um, no, I mean, people, nobody likes to pay the fees, but it's, it's as Andrew said, it's the cost of doing business the for cost. the city, so. Yeah, when, when I started, it seemed like our fees were way out of whack, way too low. Um, and I know, I know that through the years, we've worked to get them up a little bit. Uh, and I also hear that um, many people like uh, to work with Oak Creek because of how professional we are and how we can get things done. 
So it seems like we have a good balance here. And I think though too that, it, you know, you, you have to get bang for your buck. So if they're coming in and they need something and we can help them out, fine. But it isn't, if we're up front with them and they know the fee schedule, I, I think it's more than fair. I do as well. I just didn't know if anyone else had uh, gotten in, you know, just feedback. They won in 18. Oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> yeah. we're, I think we're doing okay then. I haven't had any. I mean, I the only complaint I had was about the stormwater fee, but that's a whole separate thing. But, uh, you know, sometimes these fees are rolled into the price of the, uh, like my my new uh, my new furnace and AC. I mean, the fees were just rolled into the price, and I really didn't even know what the, the fee oh, was, okay. you know, other than, you know, the, the, the contractor took care of it. So, okay. Sure. But I, I, who sets the fees for municipal court? Is that uh, countywide and we just adopt them or? Or, is, or do we set the, our own fees? I'm sorry to ask well, the question. I think no, Melissa's signaling, signaling we do. It's the latter. For Melissa. Because we set our bond schedule. I'm sorry. I was just going through the fee schedules here and I was looking at all the things in red for municipal court. You were, you were looking at the, all the red for municipal court? Yep. So. We had come back rather annually before the council, and then I think that we were at a good spot in terms of how things were functioning. So for our fine, our forfeiture schedule, it's, we were due to come back with an increase. It seemed like we were coming back annually without much substantive change, so it wasn't necessary. So this collaboration was definitely um, between our judge, um, Captain Stecker, Chief Anderson, the clerks as well, and I was in consultation um, as well in terms of where are we with things. And to your point, there is the bond schedule that comes out um, that we need to incorporate and then pay back. So this is just setting forfeitures for you know what we need to tell people who are having that citation issued. This is what you're looking at. How that's broken down, what we keep, what goes to the county, that's all part of the other bond schedule, if that makes sense. I chuckled, I don't wanna, maybe I shouldn't bring it up here, I can talk to you in private, because I saw one fee for one particular violation, and I saw the fee, the charge for something I thought was a little more serious that was a lot less. We can certainly talk about that after this meeting, yeah, and I'm not punting it other than I know what you're saying, and I would just say from seeing a lot of different cases and a lot of different situations over the years, I think there's something to be said for um, certainly how the judge handles dispositions, how we as prosecutors handle those dispositions in terms of what's realistic for what we're going to collect. So we can have really high forfeitures, but if you're going to knock them in half or way down, I think it's unrealistic expectation. All right, maybe so, after the meeting for two minutes. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Captain Stucker, did you wish to say anything? I see you You uh, came on. I just popped up in case you guys had additional information or if uh, Attorney Carls needed any additional information, but I think she covered it well. and. Uh, just as a number standpoint, it's been well over five years, almost six years since we've adjusted the fee schedule. So that's why uh, we took a look at it. And like Melissa said, we had a lot of back and forth and looking at what we had, as well as uh, looking at some of the area jurisdictions around us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, no further comments, discussion, uh, motion. Rakowski, I make a motion that council adopt resolution number 12203-120120. A resolution establishing various, <clears throat> excuse me, various fees, permits, and charges charged by the city of Oak Creek to be effective January 1st, 2021. Dukniak, second. <clears throat> Bo call. <clears throat> Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Bork. Aye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have consideration of a motion for the 2021 regular combined common council meeting dates. Uh, we discussed this back uh, at the last meeting a little bit. So if you take a look, um, as discussed, the 
the motion is in front of you for consideration uh, with the three dates that were discussed. Any questions, comments? And again, just as discussed at the last meeting, if we do have the need to clean up some year end stuff in January, we may have to schedule a special meeting on uh, the same would hold true in the summertime. <clears throat> There's no comments, discussion, motion. Oracle moved that the Common Council approve the 2021 regular combined Common Council meeting dates. Next second. Roll call. Alderman Tolman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lork? Aye. <clears throat> Duke Nack? Aye. And the treasurer's report. Uh, it is informational and it's summarization of our reports for the accounts ending October 31st, 2020. And we have Barb with us tonight. So, Barb? Hi, good evening. Um, as the mayor said, this is the treasurer report for end month ending October 31st, 2020. Our beginning balance was $34,077,563.20. Our ending balance, $32,383,776.19. Our interest earned for the month was $24,543.48. A uh, difference between beginning and ending balance was a decrease of $1,693,787.01. Uh, just a couple of uh, uh, larger items to note um, for the activity for the month. Our, we did receive a, one of the COVID grants, uh, $425,298. We received our transportation aids, uh, or part of them, $682,464. We did have debt service payments of $90,094. Questions for Barb? Comments, no? <clears throat> okay. Well, Barb, you're getting to that time of year, that magical time of year for you. It's tax month. <laughs> magical. <laughs> yes, we are. We are just just starting the process. So, so again, they can they can utilize the Dropbox uh, for for quick service that way, or Tri City, correct? That is correct, um, Andrew. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. I think, you know, we're, we're contemplating right now making certain that there's no in-person payments here just with the COVID and things like that and the safety of our front counter staff, that initial tranche of folks coming in and by the hundreds by the end of the year. So we're sorting through some of that, but uh, we were going to highly advertise our uh, other than in-person options anyway with social media and things like that. So I think we're, we're headed down that path. And again, it's a really great option. It's open 24 hours a day, no waiting in line. So I don't know that we had any negative feedback when we did that in was that March and April or March and May, Barb? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I, I think the I think the residents will take that in stride. Yeah, we do have lots of other options. And you know, people knew then just to use the Dropbox and uh um you know they'll have the banks uh in December and January. Um always can use the credit card or or a debit card uh or e check uh online. We, we have plenty of options. Great. Okay. Anything else for Barb? No, if not. Okay. Thank you, Barb. Appreciate it. Have a good night. You too. Uh, 15 gets us to engineering and its consideration of a resolution accepting the workmanship of Rosh Construction and Engineering, authorizing their final payment uh, for the Lake Vista Park structures. And we got Mike Simmons with us. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, this is uh, the uh, request, uh, the recommendation from engineering that, that, that the uh, council uh, do, uh, accept the project as complete and make their final payment. This final payment is $20,000, which uh, the city had been holding 
uh, as retainage uh, uh, for the uh, for the project uh, that Rosh Construction uh, completed for us. And um, it's kind of interesting enough, uh, uh, the occupancy was gained on the building uh, in the summer of 2018 and the pavilion uh, occupancy on the pavilion and the pavilion has been in use and, and been rented out over over that uh, over that since that time. Um, there have been some uh, outstanding issues with the building that that we uh, kind of went back and forth on with, with the contractor and some things that developed uh, after the occupancy. Um, but uh, in the end, now they, they finally have taken care of all of the items. The, the biggest one was the HVAC system. Uh, was we're just having trouble getting it to the right temperature. It was a little cooler in the winter and, and then uh, not real comfortable in the, in, the, in the summer months. So they have uh, at their own uh, cost, they did include, or I mean, they did put a supplemental system in there and that uh, looks like it has addressed the, the issues and it's, uh, it's performing uh, fine out there now. So uh, we'd like to close this out and, and make that final payment to our purchase. Okay. Questions, comments for Mike? Um, Mike, you want to start us off? Hey, Mike, uh, Alderman Trollman. Um, did we ever, uh, was Rash involved in any of the uh, that uh, playground surface uh, repair that needs to be made, or is that separate from this issue? That's separate. Uh, Council may recall that that, that project was, uh, uh, the overall park project was kind of two parts, um, where we had Edgerton do the, the site grading and uh, you know, the playground, the play structures, the uh, pedestrian bridges, um, <clears throat> and that, you know, the, the parking lots and the, the, the overlook uh, over the block. Um, this contract by Rosh was um, included the two open air shelters that are uh, on along the bluff face uh, on the south part of the site. The uh, the bluff top uh, beacon lighthouse uh, structure, and uh, the uh, the sail type uh, picnic shelters, and then of course the big ticket item was the uh, the pavilion itself. Any questions? Okay, uh, seeing none. Motion. Tomen will make a motion to adopt resolution number one two two zero four, accepting the workmanship of Rash. Construction and Engineering Inc. and authorizing final payment for project number 14037 Lake Vista Park Structures. Kelsey, go second. Roll call. Alderman and Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dupniak? Aye. Tolman? Aye. Great. Thank you, Mike. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, next, we have the Department of Public Works, and the first is consider a motion. Uh, to purchase one John Deere tractor uh, with a rotary boom uh, through a municipal lease program. So with us is Ted and he'll go through the details with you. Ted? Yeah, um, actually this is uh, something that we had talked about during the CIP uh, meetings. Um, this is uh, for a replacement of our 20 year old um, uh, boom mower tractor a very expensive piece of equipment, very specialized piece, but, um, but kind of necessary because uh, it mows all the really deep ditches and areas that, um, uh, one, the residents uh, uh, can't get or do, and uh, it is able to, uh, to mow down and reach out and get, um, you know, some of the tall weeds and cattails and stuff like that in some of our... Uh, uh, ditches and, and right-of-ways in some of the oddball spots that ordinarily you wouldn't be able to get without a piece of equipment like this. Uh, this uh, particular, um, uh, the financing on this particular uh, thing is these are bid out through the source well contract and the, the, um, the lease for this particular one goes through uh, John Deere and um, the municipal lease program basically is similar to buying a car. I mean, uh, you buy, you're basically buying the vehicle, the, the, the purchase, the buyout at the end of the lease 
uh, for this and the next item are are a dollar at the end of the at the end of the, the term. Um, the only thing about this is these are set up for municipalities and uh, if if let's say for some some reason or another uh, you were uh, unable to uh, finance uh, uh, continue to finance it basically you could return the the uh, piece of equipment and have no penalties you I mean uh, your penalty would basically be you would lose all your equity so I mean it wouldn't be advantageous to do something like that but it's nice to know that you could if you absolutely had to. Um, there, are no, uh, there are no penalties to pay these off early. This particular lease, uh, you could stretch it out for 84 months for, for this particular one. Um, and the other one is slightly longer if you wanted to. But uh, I mean, you could pay it off tomorrow afternoon or, or you know, 70 months from now and there's no penalty for doing that. The, um, the, uh, uh, the warranties would act just like if you bought a car. I mean, if you bought a car and it was a 36,000 mile warranty and you were still paying on the car and, and it broke and you were at 50,000 miles, well, you would have to pay for it. And the same holds true with this. I did put some of the warranty information in here as far as, uh, uh, this particular one, uh, the warranty for the tractor would be two years and you could uh, potentially purchase up to an additional four years. We have not priced that out as of yet. Uh, the financing rate on this one at the time that we looked at it uh, was just recently about uh, two weeks ago was at 2.9% and uh, and like I was saying, it could go up to 84 months. And I think that's about really all I have on it, unless there's other questions. Mayor, if I could just add to Ted's. Uh, go just ahead, a, Andrew. Sorry, sorry, Mayor. Just a reminder of the conversation we had at our capital improvement planning, and I believe even with the full council at our budget workshop. Uh, we were looking at these two very large and inexpensive pieces of equipment. How can we facilitate getting them done? Uh, as you know, we've been diligent about putting away, f you know, for vehicle and equipment and into our vehicle and equipment replacement fund. That's why we're able to do some things uh, at budget time that we historically may have, been, you know, been a, would have been a little more of a struggle to accommodate. I think again, with simple interest, no prepayment penalty, um, the same warranties as if we were to buy it. I think this promotes the absolute most flexibility for us, and I, I envision that every time we're talking you know at budgets at the budget cycle with the capital improvement committee you know do we want to make this twenty nine thousand dollar a month or a twenty nine thousand dollar payment or are we at the point where we just want to pay it off because we have you know a source of funds in our capital or our vehicle and equipment replacement fund this just promotes that flexibility we'll get a reminder every year to have that discussion see where our sources of funding are uh, the reason we went this route with these two pieces of equipment, if we were to have purchased them with the cash we have on hand, we would have basically drained that fund that we've been trying to establish over time, just given the price tag. So didn't want, didn't feel comfortable doing that, but I think everybody felt uh, the the need to, you know, procure these pieces of equipment in some way. Uh, so that's why we, we came back with this lease option. And again, I think we have this conversation here. Are we ready to pay it off yet? The, the interest, you know, even if we were to take this out 84 months, which probably we would never do, it's pretty reasonable to, to have that flexibility of our cash. Questions, comments? Seeing none, motion. Thank you for the explanation, Andrew. No move to concur with the recommendation of the Director of Public Works and Purchase 1, 2021 John Deere 6130M tractor with Tiger 30-inch rotary boom through the Municipal Lease Program in the amount of $185,876.88. Guzikowski will second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Borick? Aye. Dupniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gale? Aye. <clears throat> and item 17 is also Department of Public Works, and it's to concur with the recommendation of the Public w Director of Public Works and purchase a uh, 2021 trackless municipal utility tractor, again through the lease program, 
This is about 170,000 and change. Ted, any any explanation on that one? Uh, sure. I, the, the explanation is very similar to the, the one before. The, this particular lease uh, could potentially go out to um, uh, 96 uh, months uh, if we chose to do so. Uh, the uh, the financing rate was was at the same amount at 2.9 when we looked at it two weeks ago. It might slightly be different, you know, when uh, and when and if we uh, close a deal on it. But I don't imagine it would be um, much more. Uh, this is another very specialized piece of equipment. Um, we use these uh, primarily for for all the sidewalk and that that we do around town. Uh, the thing that that we really like about these trackless vehicles are one they can carry the salt for us so that uh, so so that they can take care of everything in kind of one fallen swoop and uh, and also they have the muscle to go through uh, the big uh, drifts on the side of the roads. Uh, when we have to do intersections uh, like, uh, for instance, like Putes and Howell and that, and they're very maneuverable so that uh, it minimizes our time in live traffic. So, um, uh, and it, in addition to that, uh, we, uh, we run these things all over town. So I'm sure that uh, anybody that's been out there when we've been plowing snow and that has seen uh, these things running around. Right now, uh, we have two of them. Uh, the one that we are uh, looking to uh, trade in is a 1998 uh, trackless. Uh, we've gotten our money's worth out of that one, and we plan on doing the same with this one. Thank you, Ted. Questions, comments? Just one from- Yeah, go ahead, Chris. I, I just want to thank um, Ted and, and the staff. You know, when we were at CAP, uh, Mike and I, Ken, were talking about our options, and. You know, they brought up these leasing options and we were thinking, boy, is this good or bad? But thanks for researching, um, you know, and, and getting all the information so that we can make a really educated um, uh, decision uh, on all these things that we do. But thank you. Well, thank you for considering this and, and helping us out and, and letting us get the equipment we need. Anything else? Not motion. It yeah, will move to concur with the recommendation of the Director of Public Works and purchase one 2021 trackless municipal utility tractor through the municipal lease program in the amount of $170,708. Mr. Kowski, a second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski? Aye. Florek? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. And item 18 is the license committee, and we will turn that over to Alderman Kurkowski. Thank you, Mayor. Another expansive uh, license committee report for tonight. <laughs> Has everybody had an opportunity to review it? Does anybody have any questions, cares, or concerns? All right. Seeing none, Krakowski will make a motion to grant the various license requests as listed on the December 1st, 2020 license committee report. Dukniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. And item 19 is our vendor summary report uh, ending November 24th, 2020. If you take a look and any questions, just feel to sp uh, speak up and appropriate person should be able to answer. Mayor? Yes. Just one question. Number nine. Uh, police department property uh, return. Do you know what that's about or for? Um, I don't know if Chief Anderson or Captain Stecker's with us. Um, most likely they det detained some evidence. I'm, I'm guessing, I'm speculating, and maybe that was returned, but I don't know what form that was. I don't uh, we, know. We could get the, an answer. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head either, Alderman. But I, I, we can definitely circle back on that. I didn't, uh, I didn't ask for that detail either. So, thank you, uh, Andrew. Just item six, uh, just payment for legal services. Just kind of a new law firm. I don't recognize the name.
All right, Melissa, made you get up. <laughs> hey, no problem. Getting my steps in is right. So uh, the council is aware that from time to time we have claims ongoing in various manners of form. So in terms of ongoing litigation, Kasdorf actually has been a regular um, firm that we've used because they are through CIVNIC to a certain degree. And um, we have been working closely with them on a couple of matters recently. So this is just a bill that has come due uh, given the pendency of that claim. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, seeing none, um, motion please. Bill moves to approve the November 24, 2020 vendor summary part in the total amount of $433,153.05. Bill Scale second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Scale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. In item 20 is consideration to for a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statute section 19.85 sub 1 sub e to consider the real estate purchase agreement for a portion of the city owned property located at 9300 South 5th Avenue 4001 East Lake Vista Boulevard and 4200 East Lake Vista Boulevard. President Gell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Gill moves to convene in the closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute Section 19.85 Sub 1 Sub E to consider a real estate purchase agreement for a portion of the city owned property located at 9300 South 5th Avenue, 4001 East Lake Vista Boulevard, and 4200 East Lake Vista Boulevard. House Girl second. Roll call. Alderman Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Aye. We'll now convene into closed session and reconvene at its conclusion. Uh, we'll now look for a motion to reconvene into open session. Thank you, Mayor. Gail moves to reconvene into open session. House Gail second. Roll call. Alderman Gail? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Bork? Aye. Kukniak? Aye. Tillman? All right. And item 22, um, motion on closed session item. President Gell. Thank you, Mayor. He was very, uh, very pleased to uh, make the motion to approve a real estate purchase agreement with F Street OCLV LLC and to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the city subject to non-substantive non -substantive modifications as may be necessary to maintain the general intent and that are approved by the city administrator and city attorney. Gell's Gell second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. All right. Uh, that'll get us to adjournment. Before we adjourn, as always, want to thank staff. Uh, great job, Noah. Uh, this was an easy night. You're out of here before 10. Uh, <laughs> and again, I just want to thank engineering, uh, PD, and uh, everybody that contributes to this. They make our jobs much easier here by being prepared uh, behind the scenes. So thank you all. Uh, we will be lighting a square tomorrow. There is really no official get together or event, but the lights will come on at 530. So uh, it's something different uh, this year. And we do have a lead sponsor in Martin Law Office. Uh, they are the executive sponsor of that. So please take a walk through or a drive through and enjoy it over the holiday season. So. What's the what was the campaign for that? Is it light light to square or what was it? Uh, it's I think their official is lighting of the square, the lighting of the square. So, uh, with that, uh, adjournment, please. Kowski will make a motion to adjourn. Dukniak second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Right. Night all, thank you.